Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Hello everyone and welcome to this new video about stochastic gradient descent. This is a great algorithm that is often abbreviated as SGD and it is a very efficient optimization algorithm that is widely used especially in uh, deep neural networks obviously it's an iterative methods and we use it because it dramatically speeds up gradient descent uh, this is so important in uh, deep neural networks and this is the reason why we are deep diving into it in this uh, in this video so in theory um, you can apply it to cost functions with specific properties should be smooth differentiable or sub differentiable but in practice, we are applying it without caring too much about all these, these properties. As you will see in a minute, you can think about SGD as an approximation of gradient descent. And uh, this approximation is a stochastic approximation because what you do in a nutshell is to replace the actual gradient uh, calculated from the entire set by an estimate. But let's have a look at the details because as you know the devil is indeed in the details and let's start with a quick recap and uh, we are talking now here about gradient descent and uh, what i'm trying to do is to give you a motivation for uh, using a sgd so so far uh, we essentially did three different things uh, we um, moved over our cost function only one step at a time after having back, back propagated the errors to the network and we used to do this for each sample in the data set. Now, if we're talking about MNIST for instance, if you remember what MNIST is, is a data set with very small images, very few pixels per image then and uh, Obviously, the network has a very few, very little number of layers um, because you don't need that many, right? So you need few neurons, you don't have a lot of images, back propagation is still a good option, it goes fast enough. But what about ImageNet? What if all of a sudden, instead of having small images, you have RGB images which are bigger and you have six millions of them? Well, you can imagine a gradient descent gets really, really, really slow. So slow that it's a, quite unusable, actually. So what you do is, um, well, you, you need to come up with uh, an alternative idea, right? To come up with this alternative idea, which is stochastic gradient descent, let's first revise how gradient descent works with back propagation. So, the first thing that you have to uh, think about is a training set, uh, and this training set is composed by samples. Uh, in this um, toy example, each sample is represented by a white box, white, um, um, yeah, one of those white boxes inside uh, uh, the um, gray box. So when uh, you are computing the gradient descent, you have to take into account all the samples in the training set uh, and then move. Now, this is obviously quite time consuming because you have to go through each sample every time you move. And uh, as you probably uh, can imagine, if you want to move very frequently, uh, this is not a good solution. SGD comes into um, you're in, in help because what you can do instead is, um, well, instead of looking at all the data set, um, we, why do we have to wait until we get to the end of the data set? Maybe uh, we, can, we can take only one sample, perform back propagation, uh, calculate the gradient, take the negative and move. It will be a pretty bad estimate, very rough estimate, because the, the gradient is calculated using only one sample. But guess what? It's going to be so much faster. And that's how SGD works in a nutshell. So what we do here is we first randomize the data set. This is super important 
because otherwise it wouldn't be stochastic, right? So we randomize the data set, we pick one sample, we calculate the gradient and we move. And then we repeat the process. So we always pick one sample at a time uh, and uh, it this is what gives us the booster to the speed of of the of training uh, simply because we are updating all the time at every sample we are changing the behavior of our network which means that we are influencing the weights influencing the biases at each iteration so this is a very very extreme strategy right so if you think about it before we had to look at the whole data set before taking a decision on where to move and how to update the, the parameters. Now, just one example. So can we find a trade-off between SGD and uh, traditional gradient descent? Well, the answer is obviously yes. So what is this trade-off? It is called mini batch. Well, I think you're already familiar with the definition and concept of batch so it's a group of samples that we are using for uh, performing a, a training session or better uh, to calculate the gradient this is nothing new uh, here we are using uh, the concept of mini batches because what we do is we take the training set and uh, we split it into small groups or mini batches of samples now here the difference with stochastic gradient descent as you can imagine is that instead of take, taking only one example we are take we're taking a whole mini batch before we calculate the gradient and we move now again this gives you a trade-off between speed and accuracy uh, at each iteration and all the most modern algorithms uh, applied to dnns are actually using mini batches very important parameter as you can imagine is the size of the mini batch that you configure yourself based on the size of uh, your database bigger database database bigger mini batch smaller database smaller mini batch now it is worth noticing that whenever we are calculating the gradient over a mini batch then we move we perform this iteration multiple times and uh, we get to the end uh, with a new set of weights and this is kind of equivalent to a full update uh, of uh, SGD sorry full update of gradient descent I hope that you now have a clear idea of your alternatives or your options when it comes to large data sets when it comes to a situation where speed is key while you have in one extreme in one hand the possibility to use standard gradient descent you have the full update you move only once uh, after having uh, taken into account all the samples in your data set and in the other on the other hand you can use SGD and in this case you move all the time you calculate the gradient for each sample kind of an extreme case so in the middle we have this fantastic option called mini batch that essentially helps you moving with a little bit more certainty I will now give you a final intuition on gradient descent based on a toy example so this is very important to grasp it because um, it is it is um, uh, fair to say that SGD has great properties, but it also has um, a little drawback. So let's take into account this function here, and this function is convex. Uh, but in real in real in real cases, as you know already, uh, this is this is um, uh, not very realistic. Uh, but it serves the purpose gives you it gives you a very well idea, a very good idea of how the two algorithms stochastic gradient cell descent and uh, um, um, standard gradient descent works uh, so the intuition is simple stochastic gradient descent does not converge to the minimum um, straight away 
but as uh, you read here, it dances around it. So what does it mean? Well, uh, visually, uh, there is this trajectory which is not straight. So this is due to the fact that we're not taking into account all the samples, but we're only taking into account one of them at a time. And uh, obviously this introduces some noise, some randomness, uh, but it's so much faster that um, this, this little drawback doesn't really bother you too much. Um, second intuition, this time a little bit different. So imagine that you want to uh, go from uh, A to B. This is a new, another way in which you can think about SGD and full update. So when you are, uh, let's say that you're in a car, uh, you want to go from uh, this position to that position, and you have a you you have a you don't have a map, uh, and you have all these complex uh, routes available. Uh, full update would be the same of driving your car for a given amount of mileage, and then phone hundred call centers uh, to see if you are heading into the right direction and then correct yourself until uh, you reach your final destination. Now, as you can imagine, calling 100 call centers will take a lot of time, so you have to stop, you have to make 100 phone calls, uh, and this takes time. But you have a very accurate, you have a very uh, specific uh, understanding of where you are and where you're heading to because these 100 people are, are going to tell you something and you can aggregate all this feedback and uh, form your own opinion. Brilliant. But how about doing something uh, different? Uh, something that um, doesn't involve the 100 call centers. So here SGD allows you to drive for, again, a specific amount of miles. But this time, instead of calling 10 or 100 call centers, you only pick one randomly. You're asking if you're going in the right direction, and then you correct yourself until you get to the final destination. So the error is smoothed more frequently with updates which are less, um, less certain and more error prone. I would like now to conclude by giving you a final comparison between SGD and uh, and uh, classic gradient descent. So while in one hand, SGD works with small, many small steps, many small adjustments, um, it is actually spending less time getting data uh, between the adjustments. And this is obviously very, very, it's a very good property, especially when uh, um, you have a very large data sets and you don't want to have an IO throughput or overhead uh, that forces your algorithm to constantly read data and constantly read samples at each iteration. Obviously, the drawback is that uh, when you're trying to parallelize SGD is a little bit harder uh, than uh, uh, gradient descent because yeah, you have, uh, you need to, you need the feedback from one iteration before going to the next one. Finally, gradient descent. Obviously, you need to collect a lot of data, a lot of uh, samples before taking your decision, uh, but you need less steps. And uh, parallelization in this case is uh, uh, very straightforward. And this is, you know, an advantage, especially if you have at hand uh, a lot of hard hardware. This brings us to the end of this uh, section and video. And the next one, we are talking about learning rate, a very important hyperparameter that is key to high performances. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.